Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Tuesday afternoon. I hope you're well, hope you're enjoying your day. You're looking forward to basically finishing up with whatever you're up to today that isn't fun. And uh, yeah, settling in for a, a pretty decent video. So we've got a really good report from Nazar Kinsella surrounding Spurs, quote, leading the race to sign uh, Samuel Ling Jr. I'll talk about that and what the fee might be on that front. Uh, we do have an update around Spurs' interest in Denzel Dumfries. And I kind of want to poo-poo it, if you know what I mean. Um, and we do have a new update on Tangi Ndombele's relationship with Gattas Wright and what might happen, basically, from January onwards. So, lot to talk about, lot to kind of digest and get through. Just want to say, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. You're very much welcome to join us for this journey. And uh, we're going to jump in. And I'm going to start with the Samuel Illing Jr. news. And it, it came from the Zarkin like I said, and it said that Tottenham are leading the race for Samuel Illing Jr., the 20-year-old winger is valued at £15.5 million by Juventus and he soon could return to England having left Chelsea in 2020. Um, I think we look, we, we talked about Samuel a few times actually on this channel and, you know, he, he I do feel like he divides opinion a little bit. Um, you know, some people kind of look at it and go, what a really underwhelming, you know, player. How does he suit the data system that we are employing with Johan Lang? Um, you know, we should be going for a Jota, for example. Right, I'm just picking up one name there. And I get that to a degree. You know, he's not played a lot of football at Juventus. Um, he hasn't really sort of kicked on. I think that also is partially down to Allegri playing a very a very bland style of football and kind of just saying we've got 10 players on this pitch and Chiesa. Chiesa is the guy. And it's hard to take Chiesa out of that, you know, sort of replace him if you're at Illing Jr. Because Chiesa is, you know, really bloody good, if I'm honest. You know, he, he would easily start Spurs, you know. He'd probably be alongside Son, our best attacker. That's kind of how good he is, right? Um, I've got hair on my nose. But with that being said, why hasn't he... Why hasn't he had more minutes this season, at least? It doesn't have to be something that he has to play 90 minutes every week. But, like, you know... Yeah, I haven't only featured in a handful of games. We now went to December the 5th. I should know that. The the GTA 6 trailer comes out today. I should know that off by heart. But what I would say on that is <clears throat> when you look at the January transfer market and look at who we want to go for or who we could possibly get, one thing I would say is when people go, he's not broken through in Juventus, he's not done this, not done that. I would love to counteract them with this opinion on Jota. Why has he failed in the Saudi league, which is nothing near the level of the Syria? Why has he never played in the top five league? As far as I'm aware, but you know what I mean. He's played in the SPL and did well in the SPL. And that's not to say the SPL is a bad league. You know, players like Van Dijk have come from the, the, the SPL and tore it up. You know, you've had Fraser Forster that was a very good keeper from Celtic as well. And there's, there is more. I'm not going to go through them all. But why has he not done it in the Saudi league, which I think... He's probably even worse than his SPL at times, you know. That's one thing I would want to want you guys to think about, especially when, by the way, Josh is going to cost a hell of a lot more. And is he a hell of a lot better than Illing Jr.? I'm going to go with no. He might be better than Illing Jr., but if Illing Jr.'s um, potential that is through the roof, and he could be a very exciting player. I think people kind of talk about, you know, his trickiness, that and the other. We've actually got quite a few tricky wingers. You know, players that, you know, close ball dribbling. We don't actually have a lot of athletes in the winger position. Solomon's not an athlete as such. He's more of a tricky one. Kulisevsky, the same. Richarlison, not really an athlete. And by the way, when I mean athlete, I don't mean they can run really far. I mean pace and, you know, power and things like that. Brendan Johnson's got that, right? Who else we got? Brian Hill? No, more of a tricky winger. So actually, we could do with another explosive winger. And I think that's why Ealing Jr. comes into it. And I also think... Because of Juventus and because of our relationship with Juventus through Paratici and the fact that we've dealt with them over Bentecourt and Kulusevski, <clears throat> I can see this deal being actually quite an easy deal to get done. I mean, Juventus need the money for the financial fair play to reinforce the rest of their team. I think you can get them cheaper than 15 million, though. And I think nowadays, 15 million is like, it's nothing, which feels weird to say. It does feel weird to say, but you know what I mean? It, it just, a few years ago, 15 million, you were like, whoa. It's a decent amount of money, that 15 million. <sighs> Not sure about that. Now 15 million, you're going, yeah, all right, fair enough. And one thing I would say is, guys, I think a lot of people are going to go, oh, he's cheap. There's always the cheap option, this, that, and the other. It doesn't matter your price. It's a, it matters 
do you suit Ange's system? You could be a £60 million signing, and if you don't suit Ange's system, you're, you're worth nothing near £60 million. You're worth £6 million. So the way I look at it is, I'd rather be smart with what we're doing in the transfer window, which I know people kind of go, yeah, but Levy, you know, abuses, da 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 I get that, I get that, you don't have to tell me. But what I'm saying is, is if this guy, let's use Elling Jr. as an example, if this guy suits the system and he's worth, let's say, 12 million, then fine. Because if he comes in and does well, he'll be worth 24, 36, 48. Those are some 12 times tables for you, you're welcome. So I think we need to kind of get out of the headset of, we need to spend 50 million on a player. We can spend 20 and the guy would be really good in the system. You look at some of the players that have been playing recently, Basuma was 25 million, reaching up to 35. Benton Cole was 20 million euros, I think it was. You know, those sort of players were doing really well in the system. They were not worth a lot. Hoiberg, people love Hoiberg. He was worth, what, 15 million. So it doesn't matter. It just matters about how you do in the system. Let's talk, uh, I'm actually going to talk first and foremost with Tangi and Dombele. We'll make it a sandwich, in and out, and then in. We'll make it a little sandwich. Uh, it came from Millie and uh, Galatasaray are hoping to send Tangi and Dombele back to Spurs in January and have definitely ruled out the, uh, the signing of him on a permanent basis. The technical staff have a negative opinion on the loan and the club have tasked have been tasked with finding replacements. <clears throat> I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I think people kind of know my thoughts and feelings about Tangi and Dombele. You know, you know, I think a lot of people kind of go, he's rubbish, he's that, he's that, his attitude is this, that and the other. And potentially you could be right. But also, do you know what, guys? He's a human being at the end of the day. And he might be going through some stuff that you just don't know about. We didn't know about Pedro Porro not being able to say goodbye to one of his um, best friends who'd passed away. These guys are human beings, just like you, just like me. They're human beings. And I've and I've caveated that with saying, but if everything's okay and there's nothing you know, crazy negative going on in this world, then there's no excuses for what his attitude is like. I think that's fair to play both sides. We don't know what's going on behind, you know, closed doors. He might be really dealing with some stuff. So you need to be supportive of that. Just like you'd be supportive of a family member or a friend. If they're going through this, like you'd be supportive of them. Now, if, he, if he's okay and, and he's just lazy, then that's not acceptable. Because in the Turkish league, he's got more potential than probably 99% of the players in that league. And he should tear it up. He just needs to apply himself. And people kind of go, look at Giovanni Celso's uh, redemption arc. Why can't uh, Ndombele do the same? Probably Ndombele doesn't want to do the same. And also, Le Celso, let's be honest, he really didn't have a, uh, the fair rub of the green. Even more so than a, than a Tangi Ndombele, maybe you would argue. And, but when you play, when he plays, he's putting effort in. And that's why, if you want to call it redemption arc, I don't. I just call it a fair chance. You can see the difference in the two. And let's finish off with this Demzel Dumfries. Now, this I, I don't get personally to a degree. He starts Inter. Inter are top of the league in the Serie A. They won, I think, was it last night or the night before? They won 3-0 away to Napoli. I don't know what's happened to Napoli. They've fallen apart. I know the manager left in the summer, but... I mean, the whole Aussie men situation, oh, I don't know. But they're not half of what they used to be, Napoli. But this came from Inter Live, who said that Denzel Dumfries could sign for Spurs despite interest from Chelsea and Manchester United. Inter Milan are conscious that he's not signed a contract extension with his current deal expiring in 2025. Spurs are aware that the Italian club are keen on Emerson Royale and may use him in a straight swap. Right. A few things on this. Yes, please. Number one. Dumfries is better than Emerson Royale, okay? People love Emerson Royale's effort, and I like Emerson Royale's effort. But I also know he's very limited, right? Dumfries plays a bit of wing-back. He can play full-back. He's, he's quite good attacking-wise. He gets involved. I saw the goal for uh, Kalanoglu's first goal uh, against Napoli, and he was on that He was that pass to, to the assist. He was on that cut it back with the header, laid it off to Kalanoglu, and it's a lovely finish. If you haven't seen it, go have a look. It's a banging finish. Spiring in 2025, that's always a good sign. It means that you can kind of use that against the club a little bit because I don't see him moving in January. I see him moving in the summer, which suits us, I think, a little bit better. I think we can get away with Emerson Royale being back up right back this season. But I think next season when, you know, you are playing probably twice or three times a week at times, we want Pedro Porro's sort of le uh, to be level with the other right back. We want to have that option of, 
two different right backs that if you were to play the other one, there's not a huge drop off. And I know some of you are very much Emerson Royal stands, and I'm not going to try and offend you with this, but the drop off from Pedro Poro to Emerson Royal is fairly decent. A drop off from Pedro Poro to Dumfries isn't as decent. That's all I would say on that. I like Denzel Dumfries. We've been linked to him for a few times. Emerson Royal has been linked to Inter a few times. Um, if it is a straight swap, then why not, to be honest? Why not? And again, it's that thing that you kind of go, but then that, that's right back sorted for a few years. Don't have to think about right back. Maybe bring through a youngster that you can kind of develop into that. Right? Maybe Spence, you can kind of start to develop a bit more. Or, you know what I mean? And then you look at left back and go, well, we've got Davies, you've got Sessignon. And I know Sessignon's starting to get a little bit more healthy now. And hopefully we'll see, see him in training maybe before New Year's. Part of me goes, yeah, but we need another left back with a doge. Need another left back. Need a couple of centre-halves. Need a backup keeper. You're starting to look at it and go, well, maybe Lo Celso is what we need behind Madison. Saar and Bentoncourt, lovely. Basuma, he needs a guy behind him because I think Hoiberg will move on. And I'm not saying Hoiberg's not good enough, I'm just saying I think he'll move on. So therefore, we'll need someone behind Basuma. And then you start to look at the attack and go, well, let's say you've got Kulisevsky and Johnson on the right. You've got Son through the centre with Valise behind him. We need to see what Valise has got, but he might need a, a timeout on loan, I don't know. Then you might look at left wing and go, got Solomon. Okay, if he was your backup, maybe, who's the guy ahead of him? Now, maybe Illing Jr. comes in, or a Jota, or a Noosa, or hell, you might go in there and you might absolutely tear it up at an absolute joint. But I think we need to see what we've got. But I think that attack area needs a lot of work. I think the midfield doesn't need as much work as people think. And if we get the right back sorted just through a swap, then you go, right, centre half, we need a couple. Left back, we need one. Keeper, we need one. Maybe one into the midfield and maybe a couple into the attack. Well, two centre halves, a right back, left back, keeper, five. One into midfield, six. And probably a couple in attack, eight. It's not as much as you think. So potentially, if we get a few in in January, four or five in the summer, we could be looking at a squad that's about right. But it also depends on players leaving. And for me, I don't want players, no offence, players that have been out on loan, maybe done all right to come back and play and, and be backups a la Sergio Regulon. I'd rather just move them on and get some money and replace them with players that we truly want. But anyway, guys, listen, if you hope you did enjoy it, drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section below. below. Leading the race sign Samuel Ewing Jr. Are you happy about that? Are you happy that we're being quite proactive there? Obviously, you've got the Tangi and Dombele reports, you know, potentially a little bit negative. I want to know your thoughts and feelings about Tangi and Dombele. And yeah, the Denzel Dumfries potential swap deal of Emerson. Is that something you'd be interested in? Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, this is the end of the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.